right? Totally okay, we'll like to call the Real Property Tax Services Committee meeting to order. And we have a motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Motion by Peter, seconded by Dennis. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay, so the first item is request to approve the list of chargebacks and or refunds. Um, that's typical that we do every meeting usually. <laughs> okay. Um, there is some on there that you might question, which is the Adirondack Manor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I was just looking at that one. They've that been in um, bankruptcy court, so the bankruptcy court has decided that the initial $57,000 could be paid, but then they were going to be paying the remainder over the, a 47-month period. This was ordered by the court. So these are just the new figures because the assessment changed because of the court order. So um, that's why you'll see so many of the Adirondack Manor. And it only requested on 11, 12, 13, and 15, not for 14 to be changed. So, and then hmm. the others are the typical corrections of errors or court order changes. So, so you're saying that we will, <coughs> we will get this money back over time? Yes. Over 47 months? Yeah. Yes. We've already received the 57,000. Okay. Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Yes. Is that what it is? I'm not sure which chapter it is. But yes. Okay. In bankruptcy. It has been determined that this is how the assets and this is how they're going to pay off the tax. Right. Debt. Okay. Okay. So we have a um, motion to approve now. these chargebacks. Then. Well, that's just in the. Okay. A motion by here, Doug. Yeah. Second by Peter. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carried. Okay, uh, let's see, I guess we're on to... Uh, the discussion of the Queen Ferry Parcel 308.10-1-65. Okay. Um, that is a parcel that um, went through our um, tax foreclosure auction this year. Um, it actually went through last year as well. It has, um, I think, gone in for the past three years. In the first two years, um, the people that purchased Either they fell through, didn't come up with the money, or there just seemed to be some reason that they didn't pay. Um, however, um, this year it was brought to light by um, Craig Brown and Queensbury Zoning Administrator that there would be a variance that would be needed to be able to build on this parcel. Um, the first bidder did not want to go through those steps. Um, so the second bidder this property was offered to, who is Ryan Wild, um, with a business name of Creative Spaces LLC. Mr. Ryan is um, here today with his dad sitting by the window. Um, <clears throat> he would like to go through those steps um, and be able to present this to the Queensbury Zoning Board to get the proper approval that would be needed. However, that doesn't work usually in our time constraint, so we're looking to see if we could get the county to agree to give them like a four month extension to be able to go before um, the town of Queensbury to get the variance that would be needed to build on this property. Um, you mean for a future, future the, tax sale? Well, this oh. would prevent it from having to go back to a future sale. If okay. they succeed with getting the variance, they would like to purchase the property for the $11,000 that they were the second bidder at. Oh. Okay. So, but because this property has already been through three auctions mm -hmm. and seems to have been having a problem, we, I personally, and I believe Mike and Martin, would like to agree to give them this four-month mm -hmm. extension if we could do that. Um, in doing so, we would ask that to have their attorney draw up the agreement, um, with Martin having the final approval on the agreement. Right. Um, but we would need to get approval from committee to move forward with that. Okay. Well, yeah. I'd like to make that as a motion. I think this is an excellent idea. I think it's the only way to answer the issue. Yeah. Privately, not to the county, and uh, it will certainly tell us whether or not this 
for your second second debate, Gene. And County uh, Martin, do you uh, have an opinion on this? I, I couldn't agree with Supervisor yeah. Dickinson more. I think this okay. is a, I think this is a terrific idea. I think um, um, this has been a, a, a property that has been recurring through the off through the, through the foreclosure process uh, without success. And um, I think if, if we're going to have success um, in conveying this, I think it's going to take this type of arrangement. Um, and I think there's enough flexibility within the real property tax law to accommodate this. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion, Dennis? Uh, have, have you guys taken projects through the Queensbury County process? I myself personally managed my class and uh, lecture. You think four months is enough? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you might well, want to go four months and then an extension yeah, um, if, if, if things are bogged down. That's well. Uh, yes. And I'm not sure, Martin, I, I've never been through the process, so I'm not sure exactly how long of an extension we may need, but I think the original agreement should say four months plus here's if, if things are stopped or whatever an additional. Here, here's what I thought. My thought was four months and then. Um, um, if they need additional time, mm -hmm. um, they can come back and request additional time. I, I mean, obviously, we'll, we'll, I, mean, I would think we would give them additional time. Mm -hmm. We can do it that way. Um, I thought if we did it that way, at least we would have a status report back from them as to how they're doing with Queensbury and what the issues are um, that Queensbury may or may not be presenting, as the case may be. Um, but we could do it with a, with a, um, uh, of, uh, an extension of another 60 days, I think, um, would be fine. We can do that outright. If you want to do that, I mean, is mm -hmm. at, at this point, is there anything wrong with doing a six-month agreement? Yeah, um, that's kind of what I'm thinking. That Dennis, uh, I, I would agree to change yeah. that six months. And I think at the end of that time, if they come in, if they don't get approval and state their position and what they'd like to do, we can consider okay. that. Okay. You know, Mike, we, yeah. we don't mind. Uh, you know, putting a four-month uh, time period on for an update to the committee. Yeah. Uh, there is a certain amount of investment, and I expect this to be, to use a, a term, a long putt. Uh, it's not going to be the easiest thing to get through the planning and zoning board. But there is uh, a high enough probability it's worth the investment. So we'd like to leave the open for the extension just in case it does draw on. Who um, knows what uh, could happen. Uh, we see some development, development activity between the parties litigation. So, you know, if we do put us some investment in it like that, just some reassurance that we can continue this process. Yeah. Well, I, I think the committee's willing to do six months and maybe with a status report at four months. Is that all right? Good. Uh, Peter. Uh, do you feel comfortable talking about what you want to do with the property or have you, uh, would It'll you? It'll be just a single family residence. Okay. Yeah, the, the property doesn't lend itself to any more than that. You know, there's opportunities for some recreational other things. I mean, there's a stream that runs through where there's some opportunities to convey some of that property to the county. The county will open for that also. We just haven't come to a scale scale with okay. the understanding. Okay. This, is, uh, this is a problem that is coming more and more to light. What this piece of property is, it's 20 plus acres. It was left over from the development of Herald Square. There was no, I went back and looked, and there was no indication that whether it was supposed to be held for green space or it was supposed to be because they clustered in one area and didn't use this to meet their requirements or whatever. But it's leftover land from the subdivision. The developer has sold out all the lots, now has said, well, I'm not going to pay taxes on this anymore. I can't use it. It can't be developed. So why should I do anything? We have uh, Leland Estates. We have some parcels over there that the same thing is happening where there's leftover land from the subdivision, you can't use it, can't develop it, so, and the taxes, the developer stops paying taxes. So, I, you know, this is something that we're going to have to try, I'm going to have to try or Lexi to talk to the town of Queensbury about heading this off in the future because this is going to become more and more of a problem. Okay. <coughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. So you're all set. Six months to report it. Just let us know what's going on by four months if you're not going to leave. Okay. We'll be
Okay. Am I in agreement? No, I vote on the Good Good luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that uh, your attorney will draw up an agreement or at least get me something to look at. Absolutely. Right? We've asked Mike okay. Tender to look into it. He's going to just get a, something going into the town right now uh, to get a little more background. But uh, we had asked him to do that to send a, you know, just 10 to 4 days some kind of agreement. Does it need to be lengthy, complex? Just so, something to something to memorialize what we're doing. Sure. So should our agreement state this six months with a four month? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Is that effective today? Yeah. Um, actually, it won't be technically I'll effective until the full the, board. So the full board on yeah. February twentieth. Um, but I mean, I you can represent as you feel you need to represent from this point going yeah. forward as to what, what the intent of the, what the, what the pleasure of the committee is to, to move forward. But the board would have to, ultimately the board of supervisors will have to approve this action on February 20th. Yeah. I'm not aware of any basis for opposition by the full board at this point. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. The okay, next item, uh, properties with no sale after auction. Um, as included in your packet, the list of um, parcels, there's five of them that have either sold and then the second bidder didn't, the first bidder didn't want them, the second bidder didn't want them, so they've come back and they've stayed in the county's name. Um, I just would really like to just go over them with you. Um, a couple of them I feel are kind of not necessarily problem parcels, but parcels that I don't really feel that there's much use of. Um, the one in Hague in particular is right on Graphite Mountain Road. Um, we took it in 2012, so it's gone through three auctions um, and has not sold. Um, there is a guardrail, it's right on the mountain. There's a guardrail that comes across in front of this property and there is, the property is basically like a ravine with a brook running through it. There's really of no use to anybody. Last year, I spoke to you guys about this at committee, and last year you had recommended that I contact on the property that didn't sell last year all the neighbors with, by letter, and I did that. I notified all the neighbors that this property was going to go to tax sale this year and in hopes to bring them out that maybe somebody would want to add it in. However, nobody came and nobody bid on this property this year at the auction. Um, How many neighbors um, there is, I believe, one, two, two pieces that touch it, and one of them has some uh, mobile homes on it, so I contacted them as well as the other one um, and sent them letters, and I didn't hear from either of them. Um, so I just don't know if you have any suggestions for <coughs> this year or I what. You know, I think it comes to mind to me is if no one's interested in buying it, you know, mm -hmm. it almost seems like it makes sense to just give it to a, a neighbor, so at least put it back on the tax roll. You know. I would love to be able to yeah, do that. But I don't know if we can. I mean, the prohibition <laughs> against gifts. <coughs> um, I think that you know, Lexi called me yesterday, and we talked about this a little bit. Yeah. Um, it, it would seem to me that um, under Real property tax law 1166. Uh, the county has some options here, has some flexibility here, some authority here um, to to convey this property um, to to a neighbor, perhaps, or an adjoining landowner. Um, but I I think you know what the value of that is is I I mean I'm, I'm a little concerned about giving it to them. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, if there was some nominal consideration, right. um, I, I think, you know, that I would feel much more comfortable about that. Um, what nominal is, we can, we can talk to them, we can talk to the adjoining owner about that. But are, are either of them even willing to, ha to have this gifted to them? Is that the threshold question? I mean, assuming that you could gift, it, gift this to them, are either of them willing to accept the gift? I'm not sure because, like I said, neither of them reached out to me after I mailed the letter. So um, I would have to try to reach out to them again, maybe get a phone number and be able to contact them that way. Um, 
there still comes down to the issues of the recording fees in the county clerk's office. Um, I did have a quick second with Pam this morning who wanted to do a little more research on it um, because there's New York State recording fees. Um, it's $250 on a vacant piece of land for the um, just the real property transfer report and another $5 for the um, TP. <coughs> then there is a $45 recording fee for the county and then it's $5 per page after that for the county. Um, I questioned her real quick on being able to waive that, but she said she would need to research it herself as well. Um, so I'm not sure if the county portion could be waived, but even if it was, you're still looking at $255 of the state fees um, that somebody would have to pay for those recording fees. Well, well, um, I guess just to make sure we're clear, that we own this property right now? Yes, we do. Okay, so it seems to me that there, there's an issue then that if the county owns it, it also has a liability and a responsibility, and that if the neighbor were willing to take the property, I don't really think it would seem necessarily as a gift because the consideration for that would be taking the county one off the hook as an owner and a liability and also the consideration it seems to be would be the fact that taxes would now be paid on it. Okay. So I would think that that has a value to us. Not only that, if you've put it into the auction for three times and had no value and nobody's offered anything for it, it tells me the property's worth zero. And then finally, the other aspect I would throw in there is that I think there might even be some opportunity for us to pay those fees because it would be worthwhile for us to get out from under this parcel. Mm -hmm. So I think, and get it back on the tax roll. So uh, it resolves a problem. Because I'll tell you the truth, when I was sitting here for a moment, I was thinking, well, why don't we just forget about it and let it go? But that's why I asked the question, do we own it? Because if we own it, then maybe we ought to be trying to see if somebody will just take it. Or, now, you wouldn't do this every time. Maybe just pay the recording fees. You well, know, you could try that first. Pay, right. pay us that amount. I think it's worth approaching. Well, that was my question. What is in your letter that you sent them? I didn't bring last year's. I just well, made I mean, them. What do you say? Yeah. I, I just made them aware that there was a neighboring parcel right. to theirs. I probably gave a brief description of the property um, and made them aware that it would be going to our tax foreclosure auction in October of 2014, told them the exact date, the time and place of where it was, so that they were aware that, you know, in case they were interested in coming out and bid, and if they had any further questions, that they could contact myself. You didn't give them all the money that they'd have to lay out and stuff. No. So that, that's what I'm meaning. They might not, why take up this small piece of property to put out $500? Right. But when you look at, really, what is the value of this, because they're not going to be able to do anything mm -hmm. with it, or do they really want to pay to add that into their property? That's, that's your and problem. That's the right? problem. What, what value is it adding to their property? What value is it adding to their assessment? I would say nothing. So are we going to, is, is there any, is there going to be any additional tax generated as a result of this? I would say no. But at least it, it potentially gets it off of our it hands. It gets it off of our hands and our liability. Potentially get, well, we don't, the liability issue, there's that statute in the real property tax law that if we're not, act, if we're not actively acting as an owner, we really don't have any liability, but the fact of the matter is, is that once you convey the property, it's clear that you don't have any liability. You don't have to rely on that statute as a defense, and anything that happens on that property would become the responsibility of, of the future owner of that property. So, yes. Uh, I, I think uh, somebody Make that in the form of a motion. Uh, yes, okay. You have a second it. Second by Jean. <laughs> Further discussion. <laughs> Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
this this isn't going to go to the board of supervisors yet, is it? For that motion, this is just this, this is just author, a committee. This, this author, is just authorized a Lexi to uh, to okay. approach that. Want to make sure so we still have to come back here to oh, approve it. Come back and yeah. yeah. Well, the, you'll you'll deliberate on that, yeah. and then and then right. that would be the formal the formal motion to mm -hmm. go to the board of supervisors. Right. Okay. Second parcel, Lake George. Okay. Um, the second one in Lake George. This one just went this year to auction. Um, and actually, Mr. Wild that was just here was the second bidder. Um, the first bidder that bought it actually bought the property that was right in the village of Bolton Landing, right in the hamlet, and they spent a lot of money on that. They spent $90,000 on that house. So after spending the 90000 on that, at the time when it came to pay off, they decided they didn't want this Lake George property. So the second bidder was Mr. Wild, and I know he was interested in it, but because of all the timing with the Queensbury stuff, the second bidder issue just fell through. So I would really like to see this one go back to auction again this coming year. Okay, that's fine. Um, Does the committee member have any objection? No, no uh, where exactly is it? It's right on Diamond Point Road. Good boy. Just before you start up the hill, Donna. This is Franklin McCoy. It used to be. <laughs> That's your buddy. Now the county of Warren. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it has uh, has some serious uh, issues. Um, namely, it's uh, facing uh, Smith Brook primary tributary for Lake George and it's only 90, less than 100 feet. About 9,000 square feet. Well, uh, 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 this is an issue, it's a primary uh, place of interest for our sewer initiative. This is where we started with it. Mm -hmm. Because of this exact problem with all the existing ones. There. So that whoever is going to express an interest in it other than the minister, Is it possible to put that in the notice of sale that if we believe a variance would be required to make it buildable, that we're willing to give a six months extension on closing to allow for an application for a variance? Yeah, I would, I would, I would say no. That, that, that kind of opens us up to an awful lot of then we've got to go through all the properties to determine mm -hmm. that situation. And we've mm -hmm. historically always told the buyers that's your problem to try to figure out whether or not the property is developable or not. I don't think so. Is a problem. I think if you're in the market for properties like this, you're well aware of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. they, they, uh, they'll show up. So anyway. Okay. So is, is this the first time it went through, it went this to auction and was? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay, so I guess we'll <coughs> monitor it and see if it goes on three or four times. Uh, so everyone agree we put it back in the 2015 auction? Okay. Yep. Okay, then Queensbury, 60 <coughs> Howard Street. Um, this piece of property I'd really like to see come back to auction this year. It has, however, gone through two auctions. Um, the first one, there was um, a title question. This past one, um, I think what happened is, is that the bidder just bid more than they wanted to spend, um, and they let, you know, their 10% go. Um, and changed their mind, and the second bidder had bought a few other pieces of property at the auction and didn't want this one. Mm -hmm. So, but it does have a house on it, um, and I really, <laughs> I really think that it could sell. It's just what it ended up selling for ended up being too much for what the bidder had bid and well, Lexi, what he what would do for bid? work. I'm sorry. What was the bid? Uh, was it forty-two thousand? I think it was. 
and Howard Street. Yeah. Is it occupied? The house on it's Howard house Street. Right at the end. Well, because it needs a lot of work. It does need mm -hmm. work, definitely. It's sat for a few years with no one in it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's some trees in the front yard that probably really need to come down. They're pretty large, and um, you know, it just needs a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So he bid 42 and then backed out. And then he lost his 10 percent. He lost his four grand on it. Thought that that 42,000 was high mm -hmm. in his they mind. They probably let him inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. His chainsaw wouldn't work. <laughs> Okay, so everyone <coughs> can pair it. We put it back on the yes, 2015 auction. I don't. I don't think there's any resolution required because that's what happens if we do nothing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're on to Queensbury Ogden Road. Okay, um, this piece on Ogden Road. Um, I did also speak to the town of Queensbury on this one. Um, it's a very small lot. That's the way they were originally in there. However small lot being 50 by 200 feet, um, there would have to be a variance to be able to put something there. You could put a, a mobile home there. Um, he sounded pretty positive about the variance, but he says, you know, it all depends on what the zoning board says, um, but you would definitely have to do a variance to put something there. So what I would like to do is notify the neighbors. There is one, two, three of them that actually touch it. There's two nearby um, that may and in, in send them a letter to see if possibly th any of them would be interested in the property um, and make them aware that it will be back on for this coming October's auction. Um, because if a neighbor got it, they could just merge it in with their property. Um, they, you know, wouldn't have to worry about going through the whole variance process. Um, do, do, do we uh, have an upset price on, on that when we put it in the auction? Or do we start out a, a dollar? Well, yeah, they don't go that low, but yes, usually. <laughs> there was actually a piece that sold at the auction for a dollar this year. I think we should put it back on. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, notify the adjoiners. Do you think we need any resolution on this? We didn't last year no. when we did okay. this, and That's you fine. asked me to send letters. Okay. In Warrensburg, Smith Street. Okay. <laughs> now this is a tiny piece. Yeah. Huh? Um, this is kind of a, <laughs> this is one that I also spoke with Martin on yesterday. Um, this property is a f basically a six foot by 145 foot strip. Um, all that's really kind of growing on it right now is some brush. It's right next to the people's property. I know a couple years ago when we went out and actually tagged the property the neighbor called us right up because she thought we were trying to take her property um, to find out that it was the six-foot strip. Um, what happened, I feel, was an error in a deed way back in the 60s. Um, the original deed that I see in 1966 included this as a whole piece of property um, with the neighboring piece, and it was um, a 66-foot by... 145 by 65 feet by 145. When they conveyed this property in 1969, I really believe there was a typo in the deed back in 1969 because it then went from 60 feet by 145 by 60 feet by 145. However, back then was really before the mapping office existed, so it just went through and then it ended up creating a separate parcel um, which is this six-foot strip parcel. Um, I know I have spoke to the neighbor, um, I think it was a couple years ago when she called because we had tagged the property. Um, she wouldn't be willing to pay the recording fees. She says, you know, it's not hurting me the way it is right now. I'm not using it. Um, she says, why would I come to the auction and buy that and then have to spend the money to buy it and spend the money to record the documents, she says it's not of that value to me to do that. Um, it's not, is it, is it between the, the road, the highway right away and I the have parcel? It's in between two neighbors. It's in between, oh, it's between two, two neighbors. neighbors. But the oh, yeah. that I you spoke map, to. That would help, yeah. Would it be a possible, uh, to get 
did a title report indicating that more likely belongs to the neighbor and then notify them? Well, we, we would have a title report through the tax foreclosure process already. Uh, but we can, we can, I haven't examined that, but we could take another look. Uh, well, well, the last resort is maybe what we need to do is get the sheriff to survey it along with the title report, and if the title seems to go to the neighbor, we can notify them. Well, the that's where the title's been changed since, though, because we originally took this property back in 2000 for delinquent taxes, and we sold it um, in 2001. So there's been an owner in between. So what, 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 what year did the error occur? <laughs> in the 60s. In 66, the deed described it as a whole, including that little strip with the property, I believe, if you're looking at it to your right on the corner yeah. there. Mm -hmm. um, but then in 69, when they conveyed, they only conveyed the piece on the corner, not the little strip. So it left this little strip as a parcel. And then, you know, it probably went if for there years were without... Yeah, if I there would was, agree with you that it's If there were subdivision regulations at that time, it would, it would be an illegal subdivision. So. Right, but the problem of it is, is we took title to it in between and then we conveyed it and now we've taken it back. So I don't know what... Who do we convey it to? Uh, it it's called it, if you have a, a, a title defect, yeah. it doesn't make any difference. You transfer it 20 times, you still got the defect. So there so would be a possibility of so you come back able now to convey it back and you get them? a title search and a survey showing that all likelihood it was never a standalone parcel. Well, contact, contact the okay. rightful owner now. There's no charge for well, her. We're just getting her off the... I think... Um, you know, it sounds like that would be a practical solution, but I'm wondering if that cost would warrant the county just simply saying, will you take yeah. it at no right, cost yeah. and we'll right. pay the title fees? Same as the other survey. parcel. Or the, you know, the, the, well, not the title, but the yeah, transfer. If that owner won't take it at no cost, we could uh, offer it to the other other. Owner. Right. I, I think that that neighbor uh, to the right, I think she would probably be willing to have it merged into her property. I just know yeah. that she didn't want to absorb pay. the cost. I would have to contact her again, though. That's what I think we should do. Anyone want to make a motion to that effect? Motion by Dennis, seconded by Gene. Any further discussion? Well, what happens if they both want it? <coughs> well, I think if we offer it to her first because she was the property that it was originally part of. Okay, it just, and I know it's, the odds are slim, but what if they both said, hey, I, I found out that you offered that to my neighbor. Well, it's a nice problem to have. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can sell it. But they don't want to pay for it, Martin. They just well, both well, want we'll it. We'll see about that. <laughs> okay. And it, if it, 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 it appears to be fairly clearly just an error in the deed. Right. Offer it back to the person who thought she owned it anyways. It makes a lot of sense to me. So. so where are we leaving this one at? Putting it on your list of phone calls. Yeah. Contact her to see. Okay. So, it's up to you to fast talk. No <laughs> problem. <laughs> okay. Any other discussion on it? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, I guess that's it for those, um, right? It, it is, but you know, I'd like to add one more in there that I didn't add to the agenda. I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to make you guys aware that um, this year I was looking to do. Um, we do every year a Board of Assessment Review training for all the town's um, Board of Assessment Review members that are newly appointed or reappointed. Um, and this year I was speaking with the director from Washington County and we were looking to do our bar training together and possibly use ACC um, facility at the forum. Um, it would be April 22nd from 6 to 10. I have contacted ACC and they have sent me um, an agreement, contract, use agreement. I'm not 100%. going to have Martin review it. However, I just got that to Martin this morning um, when he came in. So he hasn't really had time because I just got it the other day to review it. Um, so I just wanted to make you aware that that's what we're looking to do this year instead of having it here and used to use 6103, but we thought if we could put the two counties together and get it done in one night and mm -hmm. um, 
it would just be more efficient. So I just wanted to make you aware okay. of that. So there aren't any, there aren't any fees at the county. There is no fees incur. that the county would incur just okay. having to sign a um, contract with ACC. At 6 to 10 in the morning? Or no, at night. At 6 at 10 in the evening. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it then. Is, it is, is, there is a, what, what date is this going to occur? April 22nd, which is a Wednesday okay. evening. Um, so just looking at this, Lexi, there are some, there are some policies and procedures that ACC has. There's some campus regulations. Um, mm -hmm. you know, that okay. that you're acknowledging mm -hmm. you will, you would follow mm -hmm. fees and payment is is obviously inapplicable, but I do think that um, it would make sense to authorize have a formal resolution from the board authorizing Lexi to enter into this agreement. Okay. Facility reservation request. Motion by Dennis, second by Peter. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay. That next item is possible increase to the budget code. Okay. Um, sorry. Okay. Um, this year, I mean, I'm not looking to do this today, but um, this past year, um, New York State sends us a bill every year, and it's usually at the very end of November, the beginning of December, and it's for our RPS um, licensing fees, which all the towns use this as well as the county, um, and the county pays more than half and we bill out to the town six thousand dollars <coughs> however this past year um, there were some towns that were in caps that broke their caps um, and those towns being Bolton and Lake George were in a cap together um, and Chester and Horicon were in a cap together um, those parcels when you add them up together and get a total for each town the way the state does this, <coughs> before when they were in a cap, they were only charging us $1,650 for Bolton and Lake George and the same price for Chester and Horicon because of the number of parcels and the range that it fell within. Um, however, when you split them out, they then bill per each town per the number of parcels, which now puts you at a higher price, um, whereas it was $1,650 for Bolton and Lake George together. Now it is a total of $2,600. So it increased by $950 to have those towns split out. And then for Chester and Horicon, it increased by $1,050. I don't, I don't understand that out. because we, w we immediately went into another cap with Warrensburg. But you're not in a cap. Per se, you're yeah. using the same assessor, but you're not in an, a consolidated assessing unit. So it's a little different. You're using the same assessor, but you're not actually. You didn't go into an agreement with the state of New York, if I'm saying that correctly, to go into that cap. So if you were in an agreement with the state, then yes, you would probably end up with a, a lower price having Warrensburg and um, Chester merged. But because it's not like that, we took the hit, and it was an extra two thousand dollars in my budget that I scrambled and found at the end of the year to be able to pay that. Well, however, the first <laughs> thank you. <Yeah. laughs> um, however, I don't have that money in my budget this year, so um, I may down the road be coming back to you. I was hoping to wait until budget time, and then if needed, maybe go to contingency if it was recommended unless at that time I can find money, but I figured I would wait until I got midway through the budget year before I started looking for money so I didn't cut myself short somewhere else. Okay. Dennis? Uh, let me be the first to admit that I totally appreciate <laughs> it. Um, yeah, I'm in the shadow of the mm -hmm. We, like George and Bolton, shared assessors year or two ago that right. came on where right. he, he retired. Mm -hmm. uh, Bolton eventually hired him back individually mm -hmm. and retired. Mm -hmm. Is that what this is all? Because you two shared him, but you actually were in an agreement with the state of New York for a consolidated assessing unit. Along with sharing. 
along with sharing that assessor, yes. So the two towns were in this agreement, and, and when you split that and you no longer are using that as a whole with Bolton, then that's where it creates that you now pay a fee based on the number of parcels you have just in your town as well as Bolton does. So it ends up a higher fee. I should have brought up the breakdown of the way the state bills for So they for charge that. you a higher fee individually? Because it's based on the number of parcels, like from one to, let's oh, just I say 3,000 is this, and from 3,001 to 5,000, you know. So let me ask you this question. If that's the case, can we go s still go into agreement with Bolton even though we have two different assessors? Because mm -mm. it wouldn't be a consolidated assessing unit anymore because you're not using the same assessor. And mm. it's not, you're not keeping everything equal. Usually when like Bolton, when Dave did the revalue, you know, you guys were both at 100 or your, your equalization rates were always the same because right. he kept you at the same value all along. So you're not doing anything the same anymore. It's not, you would have to work out an agreement with the state of New York to go back into that task. You've given me all the wrong answers. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, one more question for you. Where did you get the money in your budget to start with the pay bills? Where? Did I come up with the extra $2,000? No, I didn't know. I oh, came oh, up that. to the other? Yeah. Um, because we have that set in our budget, and then we bill back every year. We send a bill to the town, and we bill back just $6,000 to the town. All right. So and you then still we it's pay eventually the going difference. back to the town anyway. Well, that was something else that kind of needed to be talked about. Don't because confuse me. Yeah, how do you go on? Because I cannot find other than it was a budget discussion back in like 2009, I think it was. Um, there was a budget discussion that gave Mike the authority to charge back to the town. That, but there was nothing set anywhere saying how much he was to charge back to the towns or how it was to be divvied up. So it's not even like the towns are paying, the towns are paying 6,000 and we're paying it was 13.3, so we were paying the difference. So another, what, 7,300, 7,000. So are you telling me now you want to change that? Well, I'm thinking that it should be discussed with my budget committee come <laughs> a budget time as to how this should be broken up. Because I think if there's this larger fee is now being incurred, because now we're up to 15.3, where it was 13.3 before, now the county's taking on that extra $2,000. Should we try to divvy it out and make it a little more even? I don't well, know. I, that's I, not I my call. I'm not arguing that point, but I think we need to get some resolution here. So in 2009, they were, were back charging the... It, was, it started in... Two th Mike sent a letter out in 2010 for your 2011 budget, I believe, because it was in August is when the letter was dated in 2010 that he notified the town. So, but the only thing that I saw that was mentioned in a committee thing was in a 2009 um, old agenda that he had brought it to um, committee then, but it was based on budget talks. A budget committee is who recommended that Mike charges back, according to the letter. So I'm well, not. This was all when, when the county was in fiscal stress at that particular time. We were all given the instructions to try to come up with ways to save money. So I went to the budget and said, okay, here's one way we can save money. The county can always pay the entire amount for the licensing fees for all the towns, and it never charged back. And I suggested at that time, how about we split it 50-50? We leave my budget a little bit and pass it along to the budget committee and the, and the budget officer and everybody at that time said, okay, and we went forward with it, and that's how I, it's been budgeted since. But the 50-50 split is now skewed because the state has raised what they're requesting to be paid and there was never anything in writing that said it had to be 50-50 split. It was just that X number of dollars that kept getting charged back to the town. Well, as a owner of the money, I don't have a problem with a 50-50 split if that's what you're going to do. Well, what he did do is... But it hasn't worked that way now just because it's always been the $6,000 was divvied up among the right. towns. So he did a per parcel. However, this year is the first year that I've actually seen where the state actually listed on their um, 
their invoice to us, an actual fee that they charge to each, you know, per each town. It would almost be easier to almost cut that fee in half of what's charged to each town, which would be grand total of 15300 but then it would break it down per each town, what each town would then pay. So what does it say at the Lake George? Um, if it... 2600 No, Lake George is $1,300. Was or is? Is or was in November or December. They billed me at the end of November. It would be the beginning of December, which yeah. if we yeah. cut it in half, Good it would idea. make it a $650 fee. Yeah, we are, uh, we, we are we're way over the <laughs> schedule, so I, I think we just postpone this to a okay. future meeting. Is there anything else County Attorney discussed, Jansburg, Clarkville? Yeah, I'll, I'll be uh, very brief, um, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think just to think recall that. back on October 17th, um, the Board of Supervisors, we, um, by a vote of 12 7 at 1, removed these two parcels from the upcoming auction. Uh, the minutes reflect um, that Supervisor Gerard asked that the county attorney report on the legal ramifications of that determination. Um, what I did following that is I discussed the matter with uh, our treasurer, Mike Swan, and um, because Mike Swan was would not have the authority at that point in time to accept payment from the Mosiers. Um, all the redemption periods had expired. We had a judgment for these two parcels. Um, uh, the treasurer's deed was filed. We had title to the parcel, et cetera. Um, we needed to come up with a, uh, a way um, to procedurally put these properties in a position where the county treasurer could accept payment from uh, Mr. Mosier, Mrs. Mosier, as the case may be. Uh, recall there was a discussion that Mr. Mosier, and it's in the resolution, would have until March 30, 2015. To pay in full. All to, pay, to pay in full. Right. Okay. So what I did was I made a motion in Supreme Court under CPLR 5015 to vacate our judgment in part to remove those two parcels from the judgment and to authorize the county to convey those parcels back to the Mosiers back to Mrs. Mosier, Edna Mosier. Uh, that application was granted uh, by the Supreme Court, um, and um, the order granting the application was served on Mrs. Mosier on January 8, 2015, and on Mr. Mosier as well, January 8, 2015, and on Mr. Mosier as well. The outstanding taxes that are due as of January 31, 2015, on all the parcels is $34,457.96. Um, they also need to pay the recording fees for the two deeds uh, back into Ms. Mosier. Um, but I just wanted to let you know that that correspondence has gone out. The county is now in a position legally where it can, if, the, if these two parcels are conveyed back to Ms. Mosier, the county could accept the 30, could, could accept the taxes that are paid are pay and do, doable, um, and um, they have been uh, notified of all of this. I have not received any response to my correspondence of January 8, 2015, by letter or by phone call. But um, I just thought I would report back to you that that mm -hmm. there had been a considerable amount of activity on that file since October 17th, and I think I've done everything I can do here. Uh, to put the county and the Mosiers in a position where they can pay the taxes on or before March 30, uh, 2015. Mm -hmm. But they need to do certain things now. Um, number one, they need to come in for a closing, et cetera, and they need to have, we need to get those deeds uh, recorded uh, back to them, and then they need to pay the, all the taxes before March 30, 2015. There was one other item that I wanted to discuss in executive session, but we'll wait until uh, February. Okay. So, seeing that we're <laughs> way over, we have a motion to adjourn. Oh, okay. Yes. Can I just real short, just yeah. comments, Fred? Thank you. I, I know we're running over, so I'll keep it real short. But on the next month's agenda, I'm real concerned that developers are buying land and then the pieces that they don't want to letting them go into foreclosure. That, that concerns me. That was brought up earlier. Um, so I'd like to have some discussion on that in our next meeting in February. I think that's, that's worthy of discussion, um, and I'm not sure what our avenues that's are. Really, I mean, it seems like that's more a plan, uh, town planning board function as to whether they require that it 
covenants to be made in open space. Or we, and we can talk about it, but I think it's more okay. Okay. I'd, I'd like to just know okay. okay. Yep. Second of all, the uh, the money's divided when we were talking about the. Uh, I just think they should be divided among the towns. You know, that just makes common sense. Yeah. Thanks. That'll probably be the outcome, but we can discuss it further the next meeting. Okay. So we have motion to adjourn. That's my dog taken by Peter. All in favor? Aye. Okay. We're on. You go up to one. Yeah, I, I can't. <laughs>